Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today I'm sharing with you one of my clients results from an MK677 only cycle. So this video wasn't created with the intention to promote the cycle. However, I just want to raise awareness around what you should monitor when using MK677, as well as side effects and what to expect when using it. So to give some background about this client, he allowed me to share some details, obviously not all of them for confidentiality reasons, but he's a middle-aged man who did blood work and noted that there was something off with his IGF-1 values. These results were more or less incidental since he wasn't symptomatic. Being like most people, he wanted it to be optimal. So previously he had tried IGF-1 LR3. I'll make a video on comparing MK677 and IGF-1 LR3. The reason I chose to go with MK677 over IGF-1 LR3 is that he had used it in the past and it hadn't noticed much from it. So we decided to give MK677 a try. Obviously this is a brief overview. It's always important to get a medical history to make sure he's not at risk of anything like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, or cardiac illness. So after this, we started with MK677 at a dose of about 25 milligrams a day, and I'll display on the screen the changes in his blood results. They're in Spanish, but you can kind of get a gist of what the test is. And I just wanted to make a quick comment about blood work I get sent either by clients or people who are starting to work with me. They tend to be extremely com comprehensive and overcomprehensive and it's most likely due to the fact that the labs are private and they get more money the more tests you run and a lot of them are not really useful. For example, ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate is really non-specific in this case. It's more useful in rheumatology and also I always see white cell diffs on every single piece of blood work and it's not really useful for the average person. It's more useful in the context of hematological or infectious disorders. But anyway, so there was nothing much to report from his full blood count or complete blood count and nothing really changed there. The next part was a random glucose which had gone from 96 to 95 so there wasn't a change in that. So fasting glucose does make up one of the criteria for the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So I always like to have fasting glucose with an HbA1c measure and we'll get into that just now. But as you can see, glucose didn't change. However, it's important to monitor that when using MK677 as insulin resistance has been demonstrated in a few of the studies. Urea and creatinine, those are important markers for kidney function and they didn't really change. If we move on to the lipids, this is quite interesting. This I didn't expect and that was an increase in total cholesterol and the majority of that being an increase in LDL cholesterol. I couldn't quite explain this and I would like to get everyone else's thoughts and opinions on this. MK677 in studies in particular did not demonstrate any adverse effects on lipograms but this was just interesting to note and obviously it meant we had to implement more lifestyle measures to get this under control. What was interesting to note is that there was an increase in HDL. So if we look at the liver function test, you'll see there was an improvement in ALP. It decreased a little bit. However, I don't think it was significant to start with as, as ALP as well as ALT can both change in response to training stimulus and training intensity. So they're quite non-specific. As long as they're not far out of the range, I don't really worry. And in this case, it improved, but it makes no difference to my management. Now we get on to HbA1c. Prior to the cycle it was 5.3% and now it's 5.1. So that would suggest it improved slightly but overall it's probably not a statistically significant change and it's another marker as I mentioned before that is important to take into consideration when using MK677 as a change in that might indicate you needing to stop using it as you don't want to develop insulin resistance. So so then we get on to the hormones and this was quite interesting. So LH and FSH didn't really alter too much and LH in someone who is natural can vary greatly as long as it's within the range. Most
most of the time that's acceptable as it can have quite a pulsatile secretory pattern. But what was interesting to note is the massive increase in estradiol. So we were kind of expecting perhaps an increase in prolactin, which there was a slight increase, however I don't think it caused significant changes. But the increase in estradiol was interesting to note, and we couldn't quite pin down what that was caused by, but eventually we realized he had been using HCG. The reason for using HCG was he had been looking at ways of increasing his testosterone levels to high normal, but we'll get onto that now. So that was most likely the result of exogenous HCG use, and is probably the reason why HDL increased, as estrogen does positively affect HDL. Testosterone was more or less stable with free testosterone increasing slightly and total testosterone also increasing slightly, but again, not really that significant. And in the studies, uh, some have suggested that MK677 decreases free testosterone. The free testosterone increases probably as a result of the decrease in SHBG, which we'll see later. So less SHBG means that not as much testosterone is bound and more of it is free. There wasn't much change to thyroid function, which we don't really expect with MK677. However, with the continued use of HCG, whilst it's never been demonstrated in trials, it's more hypothetical. HCG is very similar to TSH, which stimulates the thyroid to produce T4. Now in this case, there wasn't a massive change in his thyroid function from the HCG, but if we look here, there was a slight increase in T4 and a slight decrease in TSH, which could mean that HCG does act similarly to TSH, but we can't say for sure. So if we see here his HOMA or HOMA index, which kind of looks at insulin resistance and sensitivity did increase. That could be an indication of more insulin resistance and is important to take into consideration as that's something we're trying to look out for when using MK677 and kind of goes against the prior two markers which were fasting glucose and HbA1c. When looking at studies, an increase in 0.7 in someone who hasn't had established insulin resistance does not carry a significant risk risk of diabetes. However, I think it will be important in this case to monitor that change as that is something we know MK677 can do and we would like to prevent. So then we get on to IGF-1. The MK677 used by my client was obviously underground as there's no approved pharmaceutical product at the, this moment in time that I'm aware of. But as you can see, there must have been some legitimacy to it. It might have not been fully dosed or underdosed, we don't know, but it did correct his IGF-1 levels. Now this is important to note because when discussing his results, it's important to remember that if you have lower levels of a certain hormone and then you suddenly correct it, like with testosterone replacement therapy, if you go from low levels to normal levels, you will probably notice greater gains in muscle mass than someone who is going from normal testosterone levels or normal IGF-1 levels to high normal testosterone or IGF-1 levels. And that's been demonstrated with TRT in particular, although with IGF-1, I haven't seen too much research on this, but we could probably expect that. So what I'm trying to say is that his results might be more drastic than the next person, and that is because he was deficient prior to the usage of MK677. So let's look at his body composition changes. So as we can see, this is a month change with MK677. And as you may know, this may have been a bit premature since growth hormone and drugs that work on IGF-1 and growth hormone take a bit longer to result in differences to body composition. But as we can see here, he had a slight decrease in body fat percentage with an increase in lean muscle mass. Now I I cannot say for sure if this was lean muscle mass 
or water retention and glycogen retention, as that is quite a common side effect of MK677. But I'm just displaying these results and you can interpret them in any way you would like to. And so we get on to his before and after. So essentially he gained four kilograms of lean tissue, or it could have been water retention or glycogen retention. Now let's look at the changes in body composition. So for a drug like MK677, it will be difficult to notice drastic changes and we're not expecting drastic changes. But if you look hard enough, you can see certain changes in aspects of the person's body. If we compare these two photos, we can see that there is a definite increase in muscle fullness. You can see the muscle is kind of hugging the skin at this point, which is essentially mean it probably does have a bit of water retention glycogen retention and is a bit more filled out as you can see also with his arms and forearms they have filled out in size. His pectoral muscles look a bit tighter than they did at the beginning of this and that again could be attributed to a, perhaps a decrease in body fat percentage or more likely due to the fact that the muscle is more full and filling its space now. There's a slight change to the abdominal region and a definite increase in vascularity as seen by his bicep vein as well as forearm veins. Overall, for a drug like MK677, these results are actually fairly decent for such a mild anabolic, not in terms of side effects, but in terms of actual strength in anabolism. Whilst using MK677, it's also important to monitor blood pressure daily or at least once a week if you can. The more often you can do it, the better. And this is because the water retention caused by MK677 in someone who is already at risk of high blood pressure could precipitate an even further increase in blood pressure. And this could be detrimental to your health if you are running this long term. Furthermore, acute changes in blood pressure, such as a spike or increase, can also result in things like hypertensive emergencies or urgencies. So that's important to take into account. In terms of his reported side effects, the side effects that he did note were just the sensitivity in the nipples. And as we saw, the estradiol was increased, and this was most likely due to the HCG that he had been using. Otherwise, he didn't really report any massive positives or massive negatives. He said he more or less felt the same. So again, I'm not trying to promote the use of MK677, but I wanted to use this as an example of what to monitor if you do decide to use it. I don't suggest using it unless there is an indication for it or if it's been prescribed by a doctor, but at this point, I don't think it can be. I just wanted to raise awareness around the side effects and how you should monitor yourself to stay healthy or well, as healthy as possible whilst using an illicit substance like MK677. And as we can see here, MK677 does have a significant change in IGF-1 levels. And whilst in this particular scenario, there wasn't a change in insulin sensitivity, it's still important to monitor this. And again, whilst his blood pressure did not increase, it's still important to monitor because just because it didn't happen to him doesn't mean it can't happen to you and it's better to take a prophylactic or preventative stance than a non-proactive stance. But I'd like to hear from you. What do you think about MK677? Have you used it? Do you like it? Is there any point to it? And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.